Lord of Flames here, and you all be wondering why I made another reaction video for today. Because as I remember asking, remember telling you all that I'm going to stop making videos because of summer break, and even I working on a job. I'm working on Savers, which is my new job. So, well, first, sorry, but yeah, but I got a message from Mr. Betty Cooker himself, which of course. Uh, he wants me. He wants me to make a reaction video for for today, and so I decided to make a reaction video for his new episode on Needles and Smiles: The Lost Tapes. Something good, something good, I believe, which I, there always will be. So, without waiting. Here we go, but let me just lower it if I would say something, or I would just pause it, but oh well. Wait, what? There was a cat. There was a cat who just showed up. <laughs> Hello, my name is Dr. England. I used to be the principal at Spokane Washington High, but quit when a one Jeffrey Keaton and his older brother David had poisoned the school with darkness. <laughs> After Jeff spent many a year locked away in Ferguson's asylum, he escaped one grim night, unleashed the inmates from their cells, burning most of the large asylum down. Among the ash and scorched brick, made a black bag with a collection of VHS tapes labeled Project Z, along with some miscellaneous cassette tapes. I will watch and listen to them all in hopes to start to learn what happened behind those wretched walls. And even more importantly, understand what lurks in that boy's eyes who walked into my life so long ago. These are the lost tapes. Still an awesome opening intro right there. I truly really love it. Or opening title, but yeah. Okay, the music sounds really good. Whatever is in that forest isn't really that bad at all. What if we just can't see the bigger picture? I got bad vibes from Sickle Forest, dude. Well, seems like things have gotten worse since I started working at Ferguson's. Not to mention this itchy bitch. Change can always be a little messy. But once you're a part of the high mind, everything will be better. Red Wolves, eh? Interesting title. Sarge? What happened? Sarge? Sarge? Mm, Mr. Say something, damn it! What the hell happened? Well, Christopher Ferguson has something to do with this episode because of the word wolves, because more things about the wolves. Mm hmm? Probably had to do about his father backstory. Mm. Maybe his ancestors. I don't know. Nope. You requested audience with me, Chris? Ah, uh, Phineas, my good, faithful friend. Come in, come in. Also, would you lock the door for me? Wait, uh, I'm sorry. I said, would you lock? the door for me. First of all, in any movies or horror movies, a character would say, can you close the door but lock it? Please? But that's the wrong way how you would do it. Because that means you're going to get fucked. What I mean is, going to get killed a lot. Which, you know how many times will you get tricked by someone who tell you to close the door and lock it? 
to think, oh, because there's someone coming, I uh, should locked it? No. You. <laughs> You're dead. The end. But I know this won't happen, but still. I wonder what it's going to be. Oh, um, yes, uh, but yes, yes, of course. Paxton, Paxton, Paxton. Me, me, me. Huh. So, how are you? Uh, I'm okay. Did you want me to relay how Project Z is going? No, no, no. But you could tell me what you were up to yesterday. Around 7.27 p.m. Nothing. Uh-oh. He's in trouble now. So, you're not working while I'm paying you. Chris, if you're driving at something, I'll be happy to answer. You, Dr. Phineas Paxton, were late. For the first time that I've known you. Why was that? Chris, that is not till next week. Check the calendar. Wait, Okay. Wait. I don't see a need. I know what day it is. Wait. Hmm? What? It is next week. It is next week? Are you feeling well? I... I don't understand why I've jumped a whole week ahead. That's is odd. this a bad trip? You, Paxton, you know about Diane. Big, round, mute, kind of bitchy. She's dead. She's what? Dead. Diane is dead, Paxton. Oh, shit. <clears throat> I'm... I'm so sorry. Are uh, you? Oh, yeah. The way how you act. I'm sorry. I don't care. <laughs> he doesn't even care. Like, the way how he... The way he say it. Like, in, that's the way how people say, like, back to you, if you say someone you know instead, and they'll be like, Oh, I'm sorry. Because you know what they're up to, or you know they're just don't care, they're just lying. Yeah, that really sucked. They sucked. Oh, Baxton, are you sorry the big round mute bitch is dead? I fucked up here. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Did you have anything at all to do with this? So I wasn't a fan of Diane, but I wouldn't do such an awful thing. You've done worse. All these years and you don't think I've looked into who you really are. Traced your back. To Auschwitz. I have a unique past. But so do you. So do we. Down deep in the oldest wing, where he kept us, we were both victims. Wait. You know not to speak about my father. Oh. This is me you're speaking to. I know you don't want to hear this, but the most recent near escape was Jeffrey. He managed to escape his cell for 60 minutes and change, long enough for him to do some serious damage. Even had his straitjacket off, uh, somehow. By yes. a friend. He did. But you all know who but exactly. It was you. 
It had to be you. My gut is screaming with a red-hot intuition to know a guilty face when I seize it. Why are you choking me, sir? I'll snap your 79-year-old neck, you swine. You're drugging me. Get this syringe out of my neck. <laughs> what the fuck? Pig what the fuck? <laughs> You're not yourself. Oh my god. What, in, what was that? Like. Okay, okay. Christopher Ferguson was choking Paxton, knowing what he just did all of a sudden. Something I'll do about Jeffrey's escape? Well, maybe or no. But of course, knowing that Paxton was late, because due to those other scenes. From the previous episodes where Paxton was meeting with Jeffrey at night for some time. So he was secretly just was inside the asylum in one of the, near the cell doors of where Jeffrey is. Hmm. I don't know, like how it's similar to how when in the in the audio drama where the time at each night time where Jeffrey meets uh the spirit nurse, which, um, Rachel, I believe, which she gave him the sedatives, the syringe or something, to make him his body heal or some way. Could be. By the way, a Paxton probably gonna help him out in some way? Because you know how asylum was supposed to be in modern years these days. Supposed to help patients to get them back to normal. In some way, it could work or not. But for this asylum, it is not. Not the type of asylum you would go to. Which is similar to the ghost encounters of that movie. That found footage movie. Have you folks watched that movie? Because you see how the backstory was exactly from that asylum. Where this one doctor owned the... This one doctor just... Not exactly the doctor who's who just doing experiments on poor patients. Which you all know where exactly he's gotten himself into. But if you haven't watched the Ghost Encounters, if you don't know what I mean, please watch it. Okay? Funko changes. You spilled your cup, sir. All over your desk. What is this you're drinking? With Diane gone, it certainly can't be coffee. Did you get this from the tap? Sir? Huh? Well, sir, where are you going? Chris? Chris? Oh, no. Interesting right there. Something is odd. I wonder what could it be for pa for Paxton or Ferguson. Shut your mouth! I will kill you, you little baby dog! Get to know him. Hey, Floyd Lab or Officer Mays, my man. Did you end up here? I don't know. I came home. I kissed Nicole. I think I took the kids in bed. I I don't remember much after that. I just uh, woke up and it was the next morning. Uh, uh, so you showed up at my place. Just broke in. Guys, the way he said it, 
when he took his kids to bed. And after that, he just woke up in the morning until he went here to Officer Bates' house. Well, while he's at the forest, so... Zalgo, of course, since he got bitten by a Zalgo spider, probably Zalgo was possessing him, moving his body to the forest. But what's with the forest exactly? There's gotta be a reason about that, right? The forest, like that previous episode where fake Officer Maze, or Zalgo being Officer Maze, which he, it shows his flashback or the scene where his evil self was at the forest. So, that's the other thing. What's with the forest, exactly? Like, I mean, I don't know if that's where Zalgo, where Slenderman and his proxies are, but no, it's probably another location where it's near the mines or somewhere else, which, like, is the coal mines, is that the, where the forest is, or no? Because there got to be reason to that, right? I don't know. But what's with the forest? That one forest that our characters go to. The one they have a vibe feeling over it. Because you know how you folks got the vibe feelings when you're at these locations. Where there's nobody around but just you. Like abandoned factory or abandoned hospital or rather a forest. Where it's all quiet but instead you fought that feeling where something is around watching you. But you think it's, oh it's Bigfoot! Please. We don't know what this thing is was around the forest. Cause we haven't yet encountered Bigfoot. In our whole lives. Because people believe that Bigfoot is not real. Because it's probably just a guy wearing a fur suit in that old years. And just had his friend take a picture. Okay, what am I talking about this? I was just talking about the forest. But oh well. <laughs> but. Took his be took his kids to bed. So. Possessing Zalgo. Possessing his body. And kill his children. I don't know. We will have to wait to see. We have to wait and see. No, you were here. The door was unlocked. And then you saw me. Yes, but there were a few differences. This badge was on the wrong side, and I don't think he had a hat. As an officer of the law, I just gotta ask you, what the hell are you on? Dude, you were here. Something that looked a lot like you was talking to me and was sitting right there next to me on the kitchen floor. Very good vibe building for the soundtrack. If you're on something or are in some kind of trouble. Mace, it follows me. I can I can hear whispers. But the weird thing is, is they're starting to sound close. But I can barely make out what they're saying. What they're saying. What are the voices telling you? I think they're saying they're all dead. Is it his family or is rather Showing the future if everybody dies, but Zalgo and his zombie army rises. It's probably his family, I guess. It's gotta be, it's gotta be. Cause he hasn't yet gone back home yet after that. 
So that's the other thing. Which that's kind of dark. Very good, very good writing right there. I mean, oh my God, Patrick, Mr. Betty Kruger. Oh, Mr. Ferguson. Irish's testicle when somebody sneezed. Hmm. Is that music or that's footsteps? Whoa. Freddy Krueger, is that you? Because you're doing the glove knife thing. Professor Dr. Christopher Ferguson. Oh, oh. <laughs> Bless you. What's on your tie? Pretty morning. Paxton has me pretty doped up. So, I'm not a hundred percent sure you're actually here. Paxton? Yes. I think Paxton has drugged me too. Maybe neither of us are here. The mind is a very tricky thing. Hey, I found something under the floorboards. You want to see? Under the floorboards. Oh, fuck. How? How? Yes, I know that face. Is you, isn't it, Jeffrey? It's you. I know it's you. How? How did you find his mask? transformed by night. This wacky lady, she never turned into a wolf monster either. Sometimes people invent weird stories just for attention. And a lot of times, mental illness comes into play. Yeah. Mind, very tricky thing. Which, kind of true, because knowing that I was a kid who believed in things a lot, too much. Like how I believe in Spider-Man who got these superpowers by getting bit by a spider. But of course nothing happened and knowing it you get poisoned so that didn't happen so none of these things are not true. They're just made up. 
or even about turning into a werewolf. Nah, that couldn't. Only if you, uh, didn't take a shower or never shave or never get a haircut for a while, your body just grow a lot fur and whatnot, make yourself look like Bigfoot, but then stretch your mouth and whatnot to make it look like a wolf. And, yeah, so yeah, none of these stuff are not real, but at least they're entertaining to give us something. Capable of conjuring all sorts of self delusions, dude. <clears throat> you know what you need, dude? A spaghetti dinner. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna microwave you one. Ooh, man! Spaghetti, y'all! Spaghetti, y'all! Off the base, making spaghetti! Now, where's that? Well, we'll get some food spaghetti. into you. And we'll let you come down from wherever it is you're on. And then we'll really figure things out, okay? Now, do. No! <laughs> you bastard! You bastard! Oh! This beautiful spaghetti and mayonnaise! Yeah! Yeah! That's the little cherub dreams are made of. Fuck yeah! Yeah! It's so beautiful, I can cry. <gasps> no. Please stop talking to me. You frighten me, Phantom. You're pathetic. talking about spaghetti, but what in the world? What's that? I promise we'll get to the bottom of this. I know you have a lot of friends, so I don't know if you'll understand this, but... Nice. Everyone on the force thinks I'm a joke. They'll look up to my brother Trent. Even my own mother can't even give me a simple compliment. I suppose what I'm saying is... I don't have many friends. Oh, Maze. I mean, Maze. Man. I'm not going to anything happen to you, bud. Officer well, Maze, man. Okay, I get it. Uh, <sighs> sorry, Maze, but uh, I'm happily straight and married. That's not what Officer Maze mean, dude. Fuck off. <laughs> oh, man, I really do appreciate this. But I have to admit... Even talking about it out loud sucks. I'm scared, dude. Hey, I mean it. We're gonna figure this out. Mace is on the case. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> he deserves the spin-off movie! Come on! His own series! His own movie! Come on! He, he deserves something more. Mr. Ray Cougar, come on, man! Give him something! A movie, a series. Give him something. Ah! Please give him a movie or a series. For God's sake, I will chuck you. <laughs> Still, Officer Maze, best character ever been made. Even Floyd Knapp as him, best idea ever. Your phone is ringing. Oh, your phone is ringing. Pick up the fucking phone. Your phone is ringing. 
the phone's ringing. The phone's oh, ringing. Oh, Pick oh, up the hard phone. Mason. Shouldn't you be at Dunkin' Donuts right about now? Cut the crap, Giuseppe. I need your help. Last time you asked for my help, things got a little bit wild. And not the good wild, neither. You, me, and the devil makes three, asshole. Betty, Ruth, Monica, Amanda. Gladys, you sick prick. My mom's name is Gladys. So how is that fine ass doing these days? She's 97, you weirdo. <laughs> Older the berry, sweeter the juice. I mean, like a nice aged fine wine. She's still living at that halfway house? For your information, Giuseppe, no. She's moved up in the world. You're bad. She has a nice house on the South Hill. She saved up after being a garbage woman for a couple of years. Nothing garbage about that woman. She is delicious. Look, Washington, this is serious. Maybe in your wheelhouse of expertise. You got anything paranormal for me? Can't be sure, but perhaps. Okay, I'll shake that bouncing booty. <laughs> this town has always been strange. I mean, our town's slogan could be what? Spokane, Washington, Wait. home of the bazaar. Who the hell is that? Did... Who the hell is that? Between Guys, Guys. Asylum, look. Sickle Forest. Guys. Oh, uh, Maeve. 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 There's someone behind you! Someone behind you, man! You gotta get your gun out! Oh, me! No, no, He's behind you! Mate! Mate! Wake up, buddy! Wake up! Wake up! He's behind you! Oh, my God! Who the hell is that? Who the hell is that? Eh? Why am I sitting in this chair, Paxton? I have no idea. <sighs> You've been acting funny for a while now. That Where was... Is my fa that was Jeffrey's father. I knew it! He's alive. He's alive. But man... Hmm... So he's still around. Of course, that's a little bit of references in Jeffrey's Dead, The Final Sleep, where Jane said, Where's Dad? Why he been sleeping for a long time? What not? So his father is still around, hmm? But what has he been doing all this time with Jane and his wife? Who knows? Who knows? We'll soon find out. But man, that was something. I was shocked. Like, holy shit. Jeffrey's father? What? No. What? No. What? <laughs> but man, what? But, of course, Mace leaves after that. So, what happens after that, though? Probably episode 7. I don't know. Maybe the ending of this episode. I don't know. But back with uh, Mr. Ferguson's uh, talk with his father. So, there's a little bit of similarities between uh, Jeffrey and Mr. Ferguson. Well, of course, Jeffrey, who talked to this imaginary father-like figure, who is his killer self figure, I don't know, who tells him what to do to get things right. And while Mr. Ferguson's father tells him to choose his fate and become the wolf for everybody to be afraid of. So, a little bit similar to, so, a little bit similar to one of them in some way because Jeffrey now becomes a killer, what he was meant to do, and Mr. Ferguson chooses his fate to become the wolf in Needles and Smiles, the audio drama. So, that really did happen, so, yeah. A little bit similar. Very good one, Patrick. It's a very cougar. But jeez, wow. Got some of the good, good theories about it. Father. Your father? Well, he's been dead for years now, Chris. 
No one has been down here since your father's, well, you. No. He was there. He told me. I'd be just like him. He showed me his... Maybe our true face, Phineas. He showed me the world. Yeah! There goes his origin story of how he became the wolf. Ow! <laughs> well, not like that, I mean... But still, that was... That was really good right there. Okay, okay. this now am I am I getting the blob movie uh vibe feeling right now because uh remember the remake of the blob in the 80s where that one scene I saw which disgusts me when I was very young, I was very young when I watched it, and I know that's really dumb of me watching it in that age. But I remember seeing the part where the cleaner guy from the kitchen area, where he got his head or his whole body getting grabbed and just sunk into the sink, which is very, very disgusting. Where how your body will fit into that little thing, that little pipe thing, your body would just. You just die so easily with that. But jeez, wow. I got a little bit of reference or a vibe to that. And I don't want to remember that movie because it disgusts me of seeing all of those kill counts or even the one with that guy who. I think he's a student or not, jockey or not, who's gained being melted or being skinned alive or whatnot by the blob until his arm was being pulled up by one of his friends tried to get him out until showing his face being stretched eyeless very creepy with the voice with the sound too it creeped me out when I first saw that movie when I was very young and I regretted watching it oh well so I don't know what this scene is right now What's with the static? Wait. Oh. 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 No, you bastard. That's the sound I'd recognize. Salgo. What? Oh, well, that's the end right there for this episode, and I love it. Always. So that's it. Is there going to be something showing up? So Joshua Keaton did show up in this episode. And he's still alive. Excuse me up there when you shut you when you shut up. I'm trying to speak here. Sorry about that. But yeah, that was very good. Like this episode somehow better from the other ones. Of course, I'm going to say that many times for new episodes after this. Because there's so many good stuff for this. I mean, what? No. What? I said shut up! Shut what you're doing! When you, damn it, I will... I will... I will kill you! Will you shut up, please? I, I'm not crazy. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed his reaction, folks. And it's a big Cougar. You did amazing for creating this series. And even with your friends. Who is throwing? You're throwing up? You're throwing up at me? Wait, wait. Oh, wait. You're. Oh, oh, wait, what?
the special effects designer and star of the sci-fi show Monster Man is our guest in Studio C. Uh, how does one become Monster Man? Um, 35 years of uh, non-stop hard work uh, making monsters, I guess, and uh, then get a reality show on sci-fi. Uh -huh. All right, so give us a little bit of uh, background. Rest you say peace. making monsters. Well, I've been doing special makeup effects for 35 years now. In fact, um, I've never done anything else, and I don't know how to do anything else. I'm not even qualified to work at McDonald's right now. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, my man. Damn. I'll be damned. That is a really good episode right there, I gotta say. It gives a little bit more origin a bit to Mr. Christopher Ferguson's backstory for his childhood or with his father. So, sorry with the sirens went up, but it's his father, like, maybe not his father only, who started, probably made a cult of the wolves or not. Does his ancestors continue the wolf cult too? Did they? If Christopher Ferguson's ancestors continued this whole entire wolf stuff. So, that's something we never heard of. Never wraps this in the wrath of Jeffrey Keaton since we got those flashbacks with Jack Keaton. Hmm, interesting. Very interesting I want to know about. And there are going to be flashbacks for him again in episode 7. Or we're going to, um, focusing on our new character, the janitor. Or even Officer Mace. I think these two guys, because Officer Mace is getting back to his job to uh, investigate more things. I can't wait what's going to be. Which I think they're going to explore around the forest. That they gotta do something about the forest, right, folks? Well, I love this episode, Mr. Bay Kruger, and Floyd Knapp, you're still the best of being Officer Mace. And please give him, please give Officer Mace a movie or a series, I don't know. He deserves it. It's a lot of support for Floyd Knapp. God! That's awesome. Even the line, of course. Be gone, demon! Amen. I love that line. But yeah, folks. I hope you enjoyed this. I can't wait for episode 7. And now I'm going back to do my own thing. Gang for summer break. Going to stop making videos. And continue on um, working on my job. So that's the other thing. Because I don't want to get distracted by things. Because... I believe I'm going to update my schedules for uploading videos, which only two days again. Only two days because I only get out of work for Sunday and Monday. So that's the other thing. But after summer, because my siblings are going to go to college and when niggas are going wrong for different times of schedules, which to go early around the job. I would uh, not work at Sabres and probably work with my friend Jeremy as a janitor at school. Which is the same place I, I used to go at as a student. So I'm going to be a janitor after summer if that would work. So who knows. Things will change. Things will change. But I don't know where we'll get the Hollow Nightmare movie working because we were supposed to get it ready in the last year. But until no. Eh. Who knows? But I hope you enjoyed this. This is Lord of Flames here. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, folks. Have a wonderful day.